Rhythming, the Art of the Beat is an accessible, interactive drum circle exhibit designed for children's museums. The exhibit's design is focused on recreating the sensory experience of a 1960s era hippie drum circle. The goal of the exhibit is to teach children and adults the power of group collaboration through the communal drum circle metaphor. Accessibility was a major component of the design, so before starting, we created experience prototypes to simulate three different disabilities. These prototypes produced valuable insights which informed our design. The first experience prototype was rheumatoid arthritis to be tested on Andrew McKinney over a pasta dinner. Andrew's arms, hands, and fingers were restrained using rubber bands and backpacking straps to simulate the pain and limited hand-finger movement associated with the disability. Andrew was unable to accomplish otherwise simple tasks such as moving a plate or grating cheese. He also felt his disability put him on display throughout dinner. The next prototype simulated a speech impairment tested on Allison Cook while attending a group meeting. Allison wore a mouth guard to simulate the impairment, which made speaking more difficult, made her generate additional saliva, and caused her to speak more slowly. Allison found it difficult to speak during the meeting. She would often take a great deal of time to form even a simple sentence. So not all the, they're not all exactly the same. The final experience prototype simulated tinnitus, or a constant ringing in one's ears. Rod Myers wore noise-restricting headphones, which played a constant stream of ringing. This impaired Rod's ability to communicate with others, or keep his thoughts on track. What do you think, Rod? Yeah. Uh, I got distracted there. Because <laughs> a lot of times you don't have that, you know, except with your own group. Stop yelling at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> These prototypes let us as a group experience the challenges associated with several disabilities. These experiences compelled us to consider multiple forms of input for our exhibit as well as multiple forms of feedback. In addition to disability prototypes, team members visited the Indianapolis Children's Museum and the MIT Museum to understand how people approach interactive exhibits, what intrigues them, what they decide to interact with, and what they ignore. Following our initial concept generation and activities, we began to focus on the message we wanted to send to museum goers. We decided the goal of our design was to let the visitor experience the importance of collaboration, that the actions of a group can have a far greater impact than the actions of the individual. We wanted our design to simulate the collaborative nature of the hippie drum circle, mapping the horizons of the museum goers with that of the drum circle hippie. In the same way that the drum circle participants are engaged completely with their performances, we wanted museum goers to be viscerally engaged in the activity. In creating our exhibit, we explored different means of interaction, including different instruments, feedback methods, and settings. We explored providing feedback using visual, auditory, touch, and social engagement to alert visitors of both positive and negative response. We did not want these feedback mechanisms to distract from each other, creating an attached sensory engagement for the visitor. In addition, we targeted our design towards children's museums, so we did not want the feedback to be too complex or overwhelming. After several iterations of sketching, we decided on a concept that we believe would capture the collaborative nature of the drum circle in a fun and engaging way. This design calls for an arc of drums, each with an associated color. A screen in front of the drummers would display their progress with a similarly colored circle. As the group's collective drumming improved, vivid animations and physical rumble feedback would reward the visitors. If one or more group members were not drumming in sync, the animations would disappear and the associated color circles would dissipate. The performance would be recorded both for the individual and the group, allowing museum goers to download an MP3 version at the museum or after their visit from the museum website. The room would be adorned in hippie era posters, clothing, and colors. The room would be dimly lit with the only lights being showcased around the drums and the feedback screen itself. Using these visual metaphors, we wanted the visitor to make no mistake that this exhibit embodied the hippie ideal. Each element of this design metaphorically maps back to the idea of collaboration. The hippie movement itself represented the power of collaboration with group activities such as the drum circle, love-ins, and communal farming. The drums and colors represent the individual contribution to the group, where the screen and rumble feedback represent the group's collaborative progress. The very idea of rhythm itself, we believe, is a metaphor for group collaboration. To better understand the rhythmic elements of the drum circle, we decided to body storm the activity. We were not able to secure proper hand drums, so we substituted these with cardboard boxes, trash cans, and other objects that could represent drums of different sizes and sounds. We drummed with each other to understand when rhythm was both collaborative and additive to the group, 
or individual and subtractive. Using the takeaways from our disability prototypes, we explored how individuals with limited hand-arm movement as well as wheelchair-bound visitors might approach the drums. When approaching our museum exhibit prototype, we had three goals. One, test the social collaboration through group drumming aspect of the drum circle. Two, test the visual feedback of the design on the users. Three, understand if the design ultimately accomplishes the goal of the exhibit. To test our first complete prototype, we set up drums, mallets, hippie decorations, and a large screen. While we wanted to test the rumble pad feedback as well as the MP3 takeaway version, these were not the primary concerns of the first prototype. With our first group, the image projected on the screen had a video of a drummer's hands playing a beat. Surrounding the hands were colored circles that were representative of each drum station. As visitors began to play in rhythm with the drummer in the video, their corresponding color would begin to pulse and move towards the center. When all drummers were in sync with the video, the graphics turned into a swirl with changing colors. The graphics are intended to be a reward for the collaborative efforts of the visitors. To accomplish this, the group used the Wizard of Oz technique to cue good versus bad drumming in a flash interface. Our initial group found it very hard to follow the drummer on the screen due to the volume level, the complex rhythms, and many were not sure whether they were to follow the video or the other visitors. Due to the technical limitations of our prototype, we were not able to precisely record the rhythms the visitors are playing, which also contributed to their confusion. In our second group of visitors, we removed the drummer video from the screen and replaced it with a pulsing bar at the bottom of the screen and a background beat. We hoped that without the desire to match the specific hand movements, visitors would be encouraged to play however they felt comfortable. We found that users did find this visual easier to understand. One interesting observation from the second test group was that users thought the decorative colored circles used to indicate the station color were perceived as meaningful, indicating different drum sounds. From these user tests, we learned many things that could improve our design. While visitors had fun banging on the drums with their hands and mallets, our intended goal of teamwork and collaboration was not totally clear. Another concern that came up in testing was whether or not the exhibit would work if not all the stations were filled, or if it would still be possible for reward if one drummer was off from the others. Some of the users found it difficult to look up at the screen while they were playing. We consider that an alternative may be to have a tabletop projection of the graphic with the users circled around it. This format would be more conducive to social collaboration in both seeing the other users and having the ability to communicate with them. Future iterations will include a heads-down projection on a tabletop to more fully engage the participants with each other. We would also like to incorporate the dancers as a feedback mechanism instead of colors, as the dancers are a more clear metaphor to the idea of rhythm and dance. Dancers also personify the contribution of the individual drummer where the color may not have connected as fully.